Closet together, bro. Oh, <laughs> but, but let's but let's let's keep it on the down. Oh, sorry. Are we recording? Shit. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I mean, hello, friends. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of IPN's Movie Night, the podcast where we share our love for movies, good or bad. I am Alex Perce. I keep, you know what? Actually, do I say good or bad or good and bad? I good feel like I keep flip flopping. Bad. Fuck. Okay, I feel like I say it different every time, so I need to work on that. Well, the points don't matter. Uh, well, I am Alexander. <laughs> yeah, well, the points don't matter. Uh, I am Alexander Pasillas, the co-host and the creative director of In Pursuit of Nothing. I'm Carter Thomas. I'm the other co-host who could get through this introduction without fumbling. No, Ooh. you've done it before and you failed. <laughs> that was the past. This Back is the present. The this is the now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a very special guest oh, on today. Uh, he is uh, he is an, an IPN member. He uh, uh, hasn't been on it a little bit, but he's 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 coming back. Um, baby. Boys are back in he's, town. He's gonna, he's, you know, the boys are back in town. Back. Max Reed, uh, Max Reed the Third. You, you, you just go by Max Reed. Max Reed the Third is my working Max title, III, okay. so we'll go with that. I'm still okay, working on my third. name. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm really glad that that we were able to get you on because uh, I really, really <laughs> enjoyed the movie choice that you that you brought because I would have never <laughs> saw this movie if you <laughs> hadn't had recommended it. Yeah, it's. A, uh, it's kind of a. Yeah, it's funny. It's like a really the people that know about it are like huge fans but otherwise it's like no one has any idea it exists yeah what movie yeah, is that wanna, max yeah what is what movie is that well, I mean, for the audience that clearly knows what it is since they clicked on the title it's called uh lake mungo and it is an australian film and yep yeah well the plot summary that i shamelessly uh took off I, imdb uh is oh that's fine 16-year-old Alice Palmer drowns while swimming in the local dam. Her body is recovered and a verdict of accidental death returned. Her grieving family buries her. The family then experiences a series of strange and inexplicable events centered in and around their home. Profoundly unsettled, the Palmers seek the help of a psychic and parapsychologist, Ray Kimney. Ray discovers that Alice led a secret double life. A series of clues led the family to Lake Mungo, where Alice's secret past emerges. Yep. Okay, and awesome. here and here it is. Lake Mungo, there's not even any water there. <laughs> How can you be a lake and not have any water? That's yeah, why it Jerry actually Seinfeld. does have. Uh, it uh, does it does actually have a cameo by Jerry Seinfeld. Um, no, it yeah, and kidding. he just pops in very randomly in the interview section, and he's just like, "Oh shit!" Just, they really pulled their punches. Yeah, just like busting the door down the door, and he's just like, "Ghosts, what's the deal with ghosts?" <laughs> 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 it's yes, definitely good. Good job, Carter. I I uh, I think thank that was you. A solid impression. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Um, now I am I am curious. Uh, like what what about this? Like, why did you want us to watch this movie? Why did you want to share this movie with us? Well, um, it's definitely my number one favorite, like, um, I don't really want to say horror movie because the director even said that it's not really a horror movie, but it's definitely my favorite, like, scary movie of all time. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it It's one of the few, th- like, it's one of the few bits of media that I've ever consumed that, that literally, like, gave, actually gave me nightmares for a while um really yeah yeah this movie and i really I'm, i've always really been into uh found footage like as a genre and it's really it's mm-hmm. one of those genres that's like really really easy to get wrong so there's a lot of bad because like horror is really easy to get wrong so there's a lot of bad horror and then even more so found footage horror is is really really easy to get to get wrong so it, this is just an example of one that's that's just so effective and they're working with, like, and it, and it's something else I really enjoy about this movie is they really commit to 
the the world that they're building in terms of the interview style because it's like a it's basically like a for those that don't know listening now it's like a um kind of like a news documentary it's like a fake news documentary so yeah. they they got like an episode of 60 minutes or something like that yeah exactly almost yeah so they i mean that they, they and they went as far as to diff, use different cameras for like older footage that they filmed of the family and stuff they used several different cameras and they they film a pretty important section of the movie on like an old 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 like flip phone camera and it and it that's another thing that they understand in that and with this movie is they understood how limiting limiting your perspective really can make things a lot more intense because mm-hmm. it leaves a lot more up to the imagination kind of like they kind of like with Blair Witch Project you know like you don't ever really see anything and that's another reason why I feel like this movie is probably really divisive because you either as a person I feel like that like you either can get into that or you just can't suspend your disbelief enough. So it's it's kind well, of a I think this, film. Yeah, I think this one kind of offers more than the Blair Witch because I I would argue that this isn't really found footage, but just more of a mockumentary. Yeah, that, kind yeah, of like a more, man bites dog or the uh, or the puff puffskippy tapes. Mm-hmm. What puff puffskippy tapes? The, it's oh, a movie. That's, oh. Oh, oh, that's a crazy movie. Yeah, I have never seen, it, but yeah, never mind. I've heard of that. Pakeets yeah, that's tapes. a uh, that's a different movie for a different time. But yeah, how long? Uh... So, what's like your hist? What's your history with this movie? When was the first time you saw it? Oh man, um, I guess like a few years ago now. Um, I think I I think I was just saw it, saw someone talking about it on the internet or something and talking about how scary it was because of that scene. And you know, there's always movies like that and. And nine times out of ten, it's like that scene, and then you get to it, and you're like, "Was that the scene?" Like, but afterwards, I've always been left with like, "Well, that wasn't that intense," because I was thinking about it, you know. So it kind of ruined it, even, mm-hmm. even not even not without even being spoiled, like just knowing that there's a scene coming, kind of ruins it for yeah. me. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think yeah. I think that was me and that. Alex's experience as well. Yeah, but then that scene totally the scene that scene in this movie like completely devastated me like i i i was i was paralyzed with fear personally and when and when this when it reveals what's really going on and i think one of the way one of the reasons it's so effective in that way is it kind of it almost desensitizes you to to plot twists because it does it so many times that when it kind of the, the final twist is it, it kind of like goes back on itself in terms of what's really going on. Like the thing you thought was really happening is happening, but it's so much scarier than what, what the traditional version of that is like ghosts or whatever. Like the, the mm. idea is it, it kind of, I like it too. Cause it kind of almost, almost falls into sci-fi because there's like oh, elements wait, of time travel. Really in it. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Speak, say something again, Max. I, I heard some like, uh, feedback mm. did you hear that carter yeah i heard all that mm. you want hello, to hello, check hello. your mic setting hello, hello, hello. Oh. can you hear me now yeah i'm just hearing like feedback yeah there's a lot of feedback weird um oh wait say something again checking one two Checking one, two, three. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> now you're good. Weird. I wonder if it's. I was actually getting a little creeped out because you were talking about it, and then all of a sudden there was feedback. I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> what's happening?" Like Mingo, <laughs> it was like. I wonder if it's not my I, phone. Yeah. Let me turn my phone off. Maybe it might be that. Oh okay. It was sitting yeah, kind of just... like close to the mic, so maybe that's what was going on. Yeah. Possibly, but you sound you sound good now. Okay. So. Um. Do you want to just? Go? All right. Sorry. Unpause. Yeah. Yeah. Just just kind of reiterate what you're saying. Sorry about that, folks. Um. But yeah, so I, I just I, I really enjoy this movie because the twist it kind of desensitizes you to twists throughout the movie because there's so many of them. So the final one right. kind of makes it go back on itself and 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 makes what's really going on what you thought originally was happening, but it's so much scarier because there's an extra detail there. Can I talk about spoilers in this or should we just Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's kind of what we because do. Because it's so loose. We kind of like, and because we talk about movies that are like not like okay, new, cool. we're we're pretty open with spoilers. Okay, so yeah, the, the the final scene I was I was talking about is is obviously the scene where 
Uh, they go out to, so the family goes out to Lake Mungo through a series of events. They, they realize that um, their daughter, who is the girl that died at the beginning, had lost her cell phone and bracelet and a couple of other little things uh, on a school trip to Lake Mungo, which is like this dry bed lake that they went out to like have like basically a party and just run around. And uh, they go out to the lake and they find they, they find the this bag buried in the in the lake bed out there and her cell phone's in there and they watch a video on a cell on the cell phone and it turns out that she when she was out there she was taking a video and she got basically like accosted by a ghost but it turns out that the ghost was herself dead from the future and the way yeah. that and it sounds kind of like cheesy when you just talk about it but it's this movie is all about the execution that's one of my favorite things about it is like all of these things it's kind of like the same thing with like i don't know to use an example like like the last of us the video game by naughty dog like they if you just explain what happens in that game it's not very engaging mm-hmm. but just if you experience it it's it's far yeah, definitely. more engaging mm-hmm. yeah i i would, yeah, I I love would that agree game. that it's like a lot of this was like yeah that too yeah <laughs> that uh that this movie is all based on the execution and like and like the mood that it puts you in mm-hmm. um because it yeah that out of i didn't know about that scene you know like you you were saying that you had the experience of of that scene you know like you were you were kind of mm-hmm. expecting it to happen mm-hmm. i didn't have that, it, that well uh, i didn't originally i was really lucky i i actually i only because like once i heard them talking about that scene i was like okay i'm not gonna look up the plot or anything so like i just kind of i still kind of okay. went in blind oh, okay, good. because i'm like a purist in that okay, way cool. but yeah, yeah i for somebody who had who went into it with nothing i watched maybe like an old one and a half minute trailer mm-hmm going in nothing yeah that's something that i was not expecting yeah. and it was definitely the the one that stuck the stuck around the most yeah and and that and that element of like playing around with kind of time with with just because it does something later on as well which i you can explain later but it, it plays around with time it's just a, it's an idea that i haven't really seen done before yeah and i've it's it's interesting and i like that it doesn't really go into it because it's it's that whole thing like what you said you kind of have to the audience kind of has to suspend their disbelief a little yeah. bit and you know if, if you go in doing that you're you're going to really like the premise and the idea it's this one just i liked what they did and how they they brought in something that was a, more unique than just like another found footage ghost story or something like that yeah and I, no. I think the thing later that you were mentioning, if, if it's if it's not the thing that you were talking about, just let me know. But I, I think it's it's the because the, the movie basically ends with the family leaving the house and mm-hmm. it, it implies heavily that that the daughter is 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 still a ghost in that house. And yeah. she's stuck there and she just watches her family leave and her family at the same mm-hmm. time thinks because they solved the mystery that she's at peace. So they're just leaving and they don't realize that they're leaving her. Oh yeah. And like the oh, existential yeah. horror of that. And like make, cause like for me, it made me start thinking about like, well, we don't know what happens after we die. Like what, what, like it's so much scarier than any monster you could come up with. It's just like this thing we all have to face. And if it's something mm-hmm. like that, like she's just stuck in that house now. And it's, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating in in a horrifying way. <laughs> yeah. It gets rid of the notion of like, of like that, Oh, you know, like whether you believe in like spirits or or ghosts or anything like that, it gets rid of like the notion a little bit that like that ghosts can be put to rest or something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, and that's um, so scary. But yeah, but obviously, yeah, and and it like that that was also like one of the more haunting aspects as well. Um, that that aspect, but it's also like it's um, what's the word enhanced by the scene just before it where. The mom is the mom was doing this uh, this thing with uh, one of the uh, what do you, what do you, what what do you call the guy uh, like what was his job again? He was like a psychic, um, uh, para, a para psychic. parapsychologist. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a made up job. It probably but okay. is. <laughs> but uh, she was doing that. She did this thing before where he asked her to close her eyes, and she's like, "Oh, imagine like going into the house or whatever." And she's like, "I'm going to the house. I'm going walking into uh, Alice's bedroom." And I see her sitting in a chair, 
And that was like one of the more effective scenes. Yeah. Like to me, where it it intercuts with like this actual footage where like she says, "I see her uh, sitting on the chair and she's very sad," but in the shot you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's kind of like that's kind of haunting too yeah. because you're you in your mind you're thinking like she's there but I just can't see her. That's cool. It's so good. That part is like, so good. E <laughs> yeah, it, it's like that was where I was like, ooh, like this this part gave me a little chills. Later on. Um, she does it again after she, you know, she discovers the what happened and stuff like that, what she experienced, and she doesn't see her there. But it intercuts with Alice. Uh, this she apparently she apparently met with the the psychologist like before yeah, she before died. Before she which, died. Yeah, the family didn't even know yeah. him at all, and she met with she found him and met with him. Yeah, which I thought was. Oh, I was gonna say, does the did, that was one thing I was questioning a little bit. Did the psychologist know that the parents? That those that that was her her parents. I think after the fact he did the whole time. Um, okay. If I had one complaint with the movie, it would it would be that 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 aspect of it, her like talking to him beforehand, was a little vague. That, it, it I, like I agree. I agree with too. that. Because I think the way that the movie handled its twists in general, I think was really nonchalant. Well, mm -hmm. I because because the first twist that happens is, you know, they they do they do a classic they do the classic where they set up cameras in the house to catch any like ghosts or something, and they see in Alice's bedroom that there's like a figure in her room, and they fig find out like oh it's their neighbor looking for a tape, and like we all know like oh like it's a sex tape, yada yeah. yada yada yada, and it is, yeah, and then it's just kind of it's. I wouldn't say it's blown off because they came to the conclusion that it was completely consensual because I mean it it was it was yeah Alice was yeah. babysitting for her neighbors and stuff and so the both of them the husband and the wife were like okay let's have a let's have a three way and then they let's videotaped a... it and then for some reason Alice like just had it in her room along with like a journal so, or was it like a calendar like type of thing but because yeah I, something like that because like and then from my thing because from my point of view because i didn't like watch any reviews i only saw the trailer and then the description about alice's like shocking double life like i'm expecting like like she murdered people or something like something, <laughs> something like that and then it was just kind of like oh she had sex with she's her a, neighbor she's a trump voter she's a <laughs> yeah before God damn it. before that before all that happened <laughs> And then, and then <laughs> yeah. when it it turned out that the psychic had met with her months prior, that I was kind of like, ooh, like the plot thickens. Like, how are they going to do this? And then they're like, they're like, oh yeah, we just like didn't talk to him. And then yeah. we did a few months later. It was yeah. like, oh, yeah, okay, I, it's interesting. I I I I know I I agree with with that, but I also kind of have mixed feelings because I think. I think they were playing kind of like a, a dangerous game with the way they handled the twists. And I think it's more effective than it is not effective. Um, I think the things you said are all, are all probably issues in my opinion I, too. I agree with that. But I also think that the fact that they're so casual about it, because these actors, that's another thing I want to say that I love about this movie is it's some of the best acting I've ever seen in any, any movie. And it's, it's because they, all, all the, they don't even have a script. They didn't even have a script for this movie. They just had, they just had beats and the guy mm. interviewing. It's cool because the the film crew itself is the actual film crew that made the movie itself, playing playing a fake film crew that's interviewing this family. So the guy you hear answering the asking them the questions is the actual director writer of the whole thing. Oh, himself. okay. Okay. Um, his name is Joel Anderson, and uh, so. Everything you you hear them say and, and do is totally just is, is improv with the beat points in in mind. So mm. I th I think they did such a good job. The the actors did so great because it's it, they they just they don't they don't they have just enough emotion to where it's it feels real, but it, it it's it's not over the top. And I think uh, I agree. That I agree with that. to the scariness. But I do agree with with what you were saying, Carter. Of like it's a double edged sword cuz like some things kind of get a little muddled in that in that way because yeah it's not you know you got to be kind of it's like uh, Alex was saying in a uh, previous episode i forget uh, maybe the shining one with aubrey but he was saying how like you 
as as you need to you need to know that the audience can be a little bit dense sometimes so you kind of have yeah. to write explicitly but that's one of my I, th- I feel like this movie is is a it's a it's a horror movie for people that make films like it's it's for it's for people that make movies and write yeah i mean and that's and that's i would agree with that because i i do try to when i watch things i do try to keep in mind of how it translates how it translates and then how I'm taking it uh-huh. it so it's like I almost have to view it like like in two different perspectives because I know I'll know like when things work and I'm like yeah it's like yeah people won't like this but I like this yeah. or vice whatever vice versa yeah um but I'm I'm probably gonna have to disagree with you Max on the acting okay <laughs> I I really thought that they were it, it's not a fact that they were dull because I kept thinking because like I was like you know a lot of people have said this too I've I've like like watched some like reviews or read some reviews and people have said that it's like it's very bland and a little dry and stuff like yeah. that but I think and while I'm I do have the the perspective of like oh it it kind of needs to feel like dull and almost kind of lifeless a little bit because that's the tone of the film. Yeah. However, my only issue was that everyone was like that. Yeah. It's not just like her parents are like that and then the psychologist comes. It's like, why is a psychologist talking in the same tone as the parents? Like, what is this universe where everyone doesn't have any, like, voice infliction? It's also. Australia. <laughs> Australia. Uh, that's right. Okay, sorry. Dude, that's They're the, on the land other with, side of the honestly, hemisphere. Honestly, it could be said that that's the land without inflection. <laughs> okay. Is it? No. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know that? <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't know. Are you telling the truth, Max? I don't know. <laughs> Acting. Um, yeah. So so that that was like my thought a little bit about it as well. Yeah. It was like I did – my one of my major complaints was was the acting. I, I didn't think it was as strong as a lot as some I've heard some people say uh-huh. because it's again it's a mixed bag. Every time I, I I'll hear one person's point of view, they won't say like oh yeah the acting was fine. They'll say it either sucks or it's amazing. And I'm like yeah. okay, I can't find a common ground right now. Well, it's, um, it's I think a lot of that has to do with your own experience. You know, it's it's uh, you're a director writer, yeah. so you've you've worked with a lot of actors, so you're very tuned in to whether or not people have whether or not the actors have real subtext going on behind what they're saying and i think Mm -hmm. if i did have a complaint about the acting it would be that a lot of a lot of the actors in the movie in certain moments they are emoting very well but i don't know if they have a full idea of 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 their character's place in that universe and in that timeline that's a really good yeah that's a really good analysis of that yeah but I don't, because, I don't think like, that really means they're bad actors. I just think it means that that's that's the style of movie they were doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I'm not. I'm not. Guess I'm not. I'm sure they're all like really great actors. I, I think that's more of like a directing type of yeah. type of input rather yeah. than their actual acting abilities. Because they all seem like they would be really good actors, but it's just they were told to be like dull and a little bit. Well, and, and because like, almost there was since like there wasn't really a script, it was just an outline, and the actors had that to like improv sense. all of their stuff. They were probably, mm-hmm. I feel like there was just a lot going, especially for probably like the young, like the one, the kid who played like the son. Yeah, he was probably mm-hmm. like, oh, I got to think of like a good answer. I, I don't know if if that was me, I'd have a lot of thoughts in my head, and I probably wouldn't give uh, a good A plus on. On every like one thing's gonna be good, yeah. but then something else is gonna be off. So maybe that yeah. also has yeah. something to do with it. Which, like you said, Alex, is just part of the direction because that's how Joel wanted to and make the movie. Yeah, and Joel. that's why I would say like you, you are right, Max. That like this definitely, this definitely is a film that's not for the general audience, and you can tell because <laughs> <laughs> its box office was catastrophic yeah (laughs) yeah like that's insane if for people who don't know the budget and for australian is uh estimated about one million four hundred thousand and the Eh, worldwide gross was eight thousand (laughs) dollars that is insane oh Oh, your your mic's going a little wonky again (laughs) yeah Um, yeah you uh um Oh, that's doing that. Hey, pause. How's that? All yeah, right. I literally now just, it's good. God, uh, we started talking about box just, office, and then the ghost came it. back. <laughs> just wiggled. I just wiggled the mic. Maybe I need to move where my computer is. I don't know. 
know. Well, it just just to reiterate, the budget for it was uh, I I don't know what money's called in Australia. <laughs> Prob- I mean money. money. It's called money, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, one million four hundred thousand, and the cumul commun- I can't fucking say that cumulative. Cumulative. Sure. Cumulate. Yeah, that one. What Max said. <laughs> <laughs> Worldwide gross was eight thousand dollars. That's like that's rough. insane. That's that's rough. Um, you know, they actually got which a I, bit I, of, uh, money from Screen Australia um, for this movie too, though, which is interesting. I thought. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that, that's good. But uh, with that, yeah, it, it definitely isn't like a general audience type of movie. It definitely is a movie made more for. For filmmakers and more to like analyze it and put your interpretation on it it's definitely it's, it's meant to be seen as like uh an art form yeah type of uh type of movie so i i i i get i get that aspect about it so i i think that's where like my viewpoint about the the movie is is lying why i was like kind of mixed feelings about it because when i when i stopped watching this movie i I didn't really care for it. Yeah. It wasn't until like I sat through it a little bit and really thought about it, heard what people said, you know, really came to terms with my my viewpoint that I was just like, you know what, this I get why this movie has has attraction right now and I get why this movie uh is actually divided as well. And you kinda have to appreciate that and it, it started to sit a little bit more with me. So. Yeah. Uh, that's been my experience too. It's like one of those it lingers. Yeah. Yeah, I love movies yeah. that I love horror movies that linger. Um, another one of my favorite ones, probably honestly my favorite, my second favorite horror movie is uh, the Fourth Kind. Uh, the Alien. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, and that because that movie lingers with you too, because it's kind of it leaves you. I love movies that I love like scary movies that leave you with a thought, and you just and it just and it just worms its way into your psyche, and you just keep thinking about it. You find yourself laying awake at night, then at night you watch it. And mm-hmm. It's like, man, what if that's the way things really are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one definitely that. did did do that. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I realized I was I was talking about something that happened at the ending, and we kind of got sidetracked oh, yeah. with like the the plot a little bit. But what it did uh, that played around with time that made it really really cool was um, when it it. The second time the mom talked with the psychiatrist and was and was doing the same thing where she imagined going through the room or through the house and into Alice's room, it was intercut with Alice doing the same thing where she closed her eyes and she was in her room and she they started describe or talking about a similar moment that was happening, mm-hmm. but just like in their psyche. It was like really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. There was a yeah, really cool I liked moment that where scene a lot. she was saying that she went into a room and Alice wasn't there anymore. But Alice was saying that my mom came in and she can't see me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that. Like, I just said that now and I got yeah. chills right yeah, now. Yeah, man. Because it's a really good moment. That's a good point. Because I think it, it yeah. it's like you were saying earlier, like how it, it introduces that ultimate reveal that she's stuck in the house. And it's such a good way to set that up. And it's mm-hmm. also... Another another thing that that moment does, and this movie does in general, is you it, you have you have you have mixed feelings about everything. You, for me, it's like it, it's it's as sad as it is scary, and I think that's really yeah. effective because the, the the director has said too that uh, Joel Anderson has said in interviews that it's a it's an ex- exploration of grief, and I think that's what the real monster is. Oh yeah, in this movie, I, is yeah, grief, and, and that's one of the the um, kind of pull in another more recent movie that has been really divisive. Um, I think that that was that was one of the reasons I didn't like Hereditary very much, um, because I thought at the I I love the first like the first part of the movie where the son he screws around and gets his little sister killed, and I thought the rest of the movie was going to be an exploration of grief. And oh that dang, does, that happens. <laughs> oh yeah, you. I I haven't seen it. I just know about that scene. But yeah, I don't happens. know about that scene. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, I spoiled it. It's okay. I should have seen it by now. <sighs> <sighs> you should watch it. It's a, it's a really well I, done horror movie that I really hate. I literally bought it on <laughs> iTunes for five dollars when it was on sale because I'm like, 
I gotta see it. And it's been months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I, I just think that, I think the exploration of real human emotions and, and real things that people deal with is always going to be scarier than demons or ghosts. I'm just like, eh. Yeah, that's cool if you... I remember I remember someone making that comment about Hereditary where it's just like, do you think it's going to be about, yeah, like, uh, like, like you said, like grief or anything like that, but it turns out it's about like a, a demon prince or something like that. Yeah. It's like, what happened? It's, Where do we go? It's it's shenanigans. Yeah, I, I I mean, it's I mean it's good to always have like that type of theme, especially in horror movies. Like it's it's good to always play around with that thing because that's what uh, and in general that's what horror movies are like really good at. Uh, in most in more than in my opinion more than any any genre, horror is really good at being symbolic, and it's good for having expressing like feelings like dark feelings but in like a really creative way. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know other movies can do it too, but like horror usually is one that sticks a bit more mm -hmm. in, in my yeah, opinion, definitely. because I, I've seen some really good horror movies that like, uh, I, I do love it follows. Yes. And I know a lot of people question whether like what that movie is about. The director says it's not about like, um, STDs or, or AIDS or anything like that. Any type of, um, any type of, vi uh, disease or anything like that. It, that it's just about something that's creepy it's just like okay but <laughs> even even if you did even if you didn't i mean i know like if, if the artist says it's not about this then it's probably not it, you still can't put that attach that idea to it which i think is what speaks to it really really yeah really you can well. make your own it's, interpretation it's, as the viewer yeah that's what's and cool but I about think horrors art. yeah that's true but i think horror does that in like a much more unique way because it, it sticks with you or like kind of sticks with you more than any other genre. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree with that. Good, good job, Alex. <laughs> no, thanks. I can, uh... <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sci-fi kind of is that way too. I think it's, that's the most effective when it's, when it's, uh, about when it, when it can be an allegory for what the characters are going through or like a, like mm -hmm. a, a struggle that they're having or a fear that they, that they're having. Um, yeah, I think like Mungo does that really well. And it's like the monster is for the family, it's grief. And for the, for their daughter, it's, it's the knowledge of knowing like when you're going to die is, is true. It, it takes that to yeah. its logical conclusion in a way that's, I think a lot more personal than a lot of, a lot of movies I've seen that have done that. It's almost like, because the whole aspect of her, like hiding parts of her life, it's like when she when she dies and like becomes a ghost. It's like she's like forever hidden, you know. Yeah, that's cool for sure. Like that's that's a not that's a thing. Indeed. <laughs> that's a thing <laughs> that I just thought of now. <laughs> you just, you just, but, you're um, just accidentally brilliant here. Look at this. Just uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's. I, I guess I wouldn't necessarily say that it was the scariest movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It. It definitely just like, and I think a part of that is because like, I, I knew, I mean, of course I knew that it was fake, but it was, it was, you know, almost like the Blair Witch because the Blair Witch did the same thing where it's like it, it pretended to be like, pretend that it was real and it was the found footage, but they went like a step further and like made a campaign about it. Yeah saying that this is real and a lot of, apparently like a lot of people thought it was an actual oh i have a story about like they that. were actual mm -hmm. kids you have a story Tell about it. Blair Witch? i sure do so i was as as you boys know and our viewers will soon know because i'm about to say it uh i don't have a smartphone i have a flip phone i didn't get a phone until my third year of college i am very behind the times in terms of uh you know social media focused technology so i uh didn't really get into the internet until way way later than a lot of my friends so i was you know i was a sweet summer child when i got into the internet and i was very gullible and uh mm -hmm. i stumbled across that website that they that the that the uh <laughs> they had made for the movie the yeah and the, uh, is that still up i think that so, blair witch website i think it is but i i'm curious now 
I totally bought in. I mean, I, I, I had no idea because I also <laughs> didn't really have a lot of friends. So I was kind of oh. just in my own world. <laughs> um, and like, I totally bought in. And when it came out, I, I bought a ticket for Ooh. something. I can't remember even what movie I bought the ticket for. But I. Uh, and then you snuck in to Blair I snuck Witch. in thinking it was real the whole time. And I was the only person in the Whoa. theater. And the whole time oh. I saw the first time I saw that movie, I thought it was completely real. And I couldn't move wow. out of my seat when the movie was done. It was probably the, I mean, honestly, I would argue that that's one of the experiences that made me want to become an actor and get into film, period. Was just that. How like, old were you? You must have been, a, like you were a child. Yeah, I was a boy. Because that movie came out in 1999, Dane. Yeah, I was a little, I was a little boy. And you just Dang, went to the dude, movies you're... by yourself? Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, you're in Al- you grew up in Alabama, so they let everyone run around over there. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> dang, dude. That, are you okay? Yeah, no, I just made an awkward joke, so I was reacting to it. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it almost <laughs> sounded like you... It almost sounded like you like saw something gross or something. <laughs> I'm just, um, you know, googling horrible things know. while we talk. <laughs> yeah, I get. <laughs> um, but it's funny because like the same thing happened where like with with my wife, she uh, when she was when the movie came out, my uh, father in law told her when she was a kid, like, "Yeah, this is real. Oh my this is, god, this is actually happened," and she was horrified. Dude, that movie was and so scary like, the first time I saw it. It still scares me. Like, yeah. it still scares the shit out of me. Yeah. It's and and a lot of it is is I mean mainly the performances. I know I know we're talking about the Blair Witch now. We're not talking about like Mungo, but I'm you have to compare school. them. I will get a back to it. <laughs> so, but yeah, but it, it's it's really good performances, and and it it had that element of like it it um pretending that it was a uh, a real film. When when I watched like Mungo, I mean maybe when it first came out, I would have had that thought, but. Mm-hmm. With like Mungo, it's like I know that this is a mockumentary type of film, so it's like, like the creepy factor of it was dialed down just a little bit. Like it was still effective, but like I know that if I went into this and and or someone else watched this, thinking it was real, they would be horrified. Yeah. Oh, I'd be a hundred percent horrified. This is like creepy pasta shit, kind of. And it's like just you, and I think uh, I think one of the things that makes it really truly effective in that way is something that really impresses me about this movie is how, like I mentioned earlier, they, they used different cameras for different time periods, depending on like, and, it, and it, they did yeah. went through extreme measures to make it look like it was primary source. And I think that a lot of found footage movies get that wrong. Um, as much yes, as I, I like, um, it's a more recent found footage movie that I really loved, uh, as above, so below, um, as mm-hmm. much as I love that movie, it, it, it suffers from what a lot of modern found footage movies suffer from. And it's that it, it sounds, it sounds kind of nitpicky, but it really isn't with found footage. In my opinion, it's like the, the, the footage is just two HD. The lighting's beautiful. I mean, it, it's all very well edited. It just seems if, unless it's too like constructed. Part, yeah, if, yeah. If it's part of I the agree. storyline, then sure. But Otherwise, it's like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you doing? Why? Like, what's the point of going through the trouble of making it found footage? But you know, I'm I, yeah. I kind of am willing to forgive that if the movie's good, because like that's a. I really think that's a great like adventure horror movie, and the same thing uh, with like Cloverfield. I love Cloverfield. I'm a huge fan of that of that yeah. franchise. And uh, the first movie is is it, it's very HD, and they filmed it with a film crew and everything, and it's very, you know well well made and and it looks that way it looks like it looks it looks expensive but it's okay because of mm-hmm. how effective and like fun and just like and just incredible it is such a spectacle i love that movie i have yet yeah, to see I, I, cloverfield I, oh That's wow another divisive one you should watch it carter yeah i i i had a lot of fun with it but it was it is that aspect of like it, it kind of going off what you said max um it there cloverfield is like the whole thing's found footage and like kind of shaky camp but there are some aspects where it's just like you always kind of have those moments where you're like why are you recording right now yeah. 
and and this movie doesn't do that this this like mungo doesn't everything felt very constructed and it felt very appropriate because with this type of movie you have to like either go all in or not at all yeah in my opinion to make it really uh, scary. so yeah yeah or just to, yeah just to make it believable too and and what i liked about this movie too is that they always backed it up you know they, they, whatever they presented with what they were explaining doing like for example when they were like oh they were questioning whether or not they the dad uh identified the right body they dug her her body up and what i liked about it was that they backed it up with like footage of them digging up the coffin and it's like you could have just said it and then you know posted some pictures or whatever but they they really went all in to make it believable it's like yeah I think that's what I appreciate about it is that like there was no expense to the details, you know. Yeah, I, I actually found an amazing article written by the uh, director of photography of this movie. He actually has like a website that's very active. Um, John Brawley is his name. Uh, he actually has just mm -hmm. started working in the United States. He's kind of in high demand now because of this movie and, and many others. Um, but uh he he wrote a really great article where he talked about the the filming techniques and stuff and uh i'm looking at my notes here he he he, he even created five years worth of fake home movies to to like hmm. be able like all the stuff you see that's like the footage of them at the beach and everything like he filmed all of that yeah and he oh man he said he, this is a quote from him says uh lake mungo was shot using over 40 different cameras with formats including 35 millimeter Super 16, HD, digital beta cam, Hi8, Super 8, VHS, and even mobile phones. We tried as much as possible to do it all in camera and to be lo-fi. That must have been a bitch to render. Yeah, you know the craziest thing, too? <laughs> Something I found out? What? Uh, let me see if I can find this note really quick. Um, there are actually over 60 VFX shots in this movie. What? Wow, really? Yeah. And much of much of which was devoted to like subtly doctoring images, so the audience had had seen earlier in the film to like have things added. So there, you you can actually rewind the movie and go back, and there's certain like ghost ghost videos in that that like truly you cannot see the other one until they want you to see it, and it and they used and they used it with mm. VFX. It's really impressive. It's a great it's a great example Dang. of like using vfx in the way that i think it was made to use which is sparingly yeah it's not to just like create things but almost like alter it you know yeah, nothing to take not to take away from like marvel and stuff like they've done they've done incredible things with it oh like, yeah it's it's incredible like rocket raccoon is literally my favorite marvel character and he's like rendered in a computer it's fucking crazy <laughs> yeah he has more emotion than than uh, uh captain marvel <clears throat> what do i i can't i, I was i was good <laughs> I was gonna make a Twilight. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I was gonna make a Twilight comment, but I would have. Uh, oops, that Carter. Oh, don't oh, even wow. come at me when Midnight Sun's coming out, bro. Is that coming? Is that a thing? Oh shit! Yeah, dude, it, it's the book from Edward's perspective. <laughs> it's the same story. No, it's from Edward's perspective, uh -huh. so <laughs> it's gonna be how he thinks. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> Got it. I'm actually, I'm actually a little down for that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll watch. <laughs> Me I, too. I, I kind of, I, 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 do enjoy watching the Twilight movies. They're, they're Me a lot too. Of fun. Oh. I love them. <laughs> I love them dearly. You, that's nothing wrong with that, sir. <laughs> well, uh, Carter, is there any, uh, any closing remarks that you want to make? Um, um, you know, all in all, uh, the movie, um, because. I wa okay, I watch all my horror movies in the daytime. That's my safe time when the sun is me out too. and God is looking down on me. <laughs> I God can't because nighttime, nighttime's too much. So just watching this, I guess maybe like watching horror movies during the daytime also affects like the scares of it. And since this one was like super low key, that probably was why I was like, oh, this isn't scary. But then it does yeah. have that have that lingering effect dark. and then when you kind of think about like all the characters actions because in the when they first think that alice's ghost is like around because they see it in the videotape and they see it in pictures but then you find out that the sun is like fabricating the images with uh with 
like you know photocopying techniques and like mirror tricks i love that with the tv by the way i just i love how weird and like left field that is because like how weird people get when they're grieving they just do some like crazy shit it's so good yeah and because he because um since and he also wanted it wanted it to be like a motivation to like double check that it's actually her dead body so that's why they had to like exhume it and -hmm. check and so because the mom never identified the body and so he was like oh she never got that closure and now she does i just think i think the grief aspect of it didn't really play in until like maybe the second half but Mm -hmm. i think how they handled it went was really well because there's also like the segment how they talk about how in their family like the how they love each other is like kind of internalized and they don't like, they don't talk about it a lot. And I know like for the mom character, that was like a big thing. Cause like she, like her daughter died and, and she like was like, I just don't know if she knows that I loved her, which is like, which is like that, that hit, that hit like a big old bag of bricks. Yep. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, I, found so, myself, I found myself after the first time I watched this movie telling all the people in my life how much I love them, <laughs> because I was like, "Damn, what if, dude? What they got to know." Powerful. Yeah, if my ghost comes knocking at my door, ah, damn, got to bury my cell phone. Yep. <laughs> Get rid of that. And thing, I. Man. And it's the iPhone well, 11. Uh, I don't want to bury it. He's got to, he's got to like make, make that post on Facebook saying that you're leaving Facebook. Yeah. Well, Max, any, any uh, uh, closing thoughts for it before we uh, uh, rate and wrap up? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, also I just want to plug another movie that's similar that I really enjoy too. Is uh, I just think, I think the found footage is the most effective when it, when it kind of feels cobbled together from primary sources mm-hmm. and, and it, it really commits to the, commits to the bit so to speak mm-hmm. um but another movie that i really enjoy that does that really well is uh i'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation because it's a japanese film it's a uh, niori the curse um mm. i think you can find it on youtube but try to find it and 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 support the artist if you can um it's a great great movie terrifying also all right what's that about Oh man, uh, that one's, it's kind of like this, but it's more like active. Uh, it's like a documentary film cruise. It's more like a, it's more like found footage, traditional type and less like a news, a news documentary. So it's like this guy's trying to solve all these people's disappearances that have been, uh, happening around this, in and around this, this area of the country. And he, he, he's convinced that they're connected and it turns out that he's right. But the way that they, that he's right is kind of the meat of the movie and it's uh it's uh super scary Oof. came out around the same time as like um, ring and, and ring you and like kind of the j horror craze but it, it kind of got looked over but it's it's really good because it, it feels real yeah i'm looking at some like some just some images and there are some fucking scary looking shit yeah, there's some there's some there's some really scary imagery in that movie very effective okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's uh this this would be a little difficult yeah. to watch for me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's your like Mungo, dude. You found it. I really like found yeah. footage movies too. I think it's one I of my favorite, them. my favorite uh, sub genres, especially yep. in horror. Because, and then I, I really love bad found footage movies too. Because then it's just <laughs> like this is you took something to I maybe I don't want to say to make to an easier way to make a movie, but you chose like a more rudimentary way. Yeah. You still fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah, give yeah, Apollo it, 18 credit because they did it in space. So, like, you know. That movie is awesome. I love that movie, bro. <laughs> I saw that in theaters for sure. I love that movie. It's got, it's some, so it's got some spookies. It's got, it's some, got spookies. some spookies. For sure. That's got spoops for oh. sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say that, that found footage filmmaking is like you have to kind of. What's the word? like reconstruct like how you you tell a story and i think that's kind of i think it's really impressive if you if you do it well yes sir me too one recommendation i will make to our audience if you want to watch like a good bad found footage i don't even know if you can consider it found footage another like faux documentary but it's called megan is missing it's awful i really want to see it's 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 so 
bad. You but it's awful. I, it, it's it's <laughs> awful. You can hear if you listen. There's a scene in the movie because the whole movie is like through Skype calls, kind of like unfriended. But then oh, it's like okay. news footage and stuff. It's kind of it's so bad. Uh, there's this guy on YouTube named oh, Adam not- who does. Uh, he has a YouTube <laughs> channel. Your movie sucks. He did a video about it. So if you just want to oh, watch that watch it but megan in one part in the movie you can hear the director yell action oh (laughs) (laughs) that's incredible wait you said who does like a little review of it um uh, the the channel is your movie sucks and your movie sucks okay yeah and it's it's great in the movie i own it on dvd i'm a proud owner i'm a proud owner (laughs) of megan is missing it's awful. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, that so yeah, audience, go watch it. <laughs> another one, another one like that that is actually amazing is called Searching, and it's filmed the same way as Megan is Missing, but it's really, Jonathan really... with John with Harold with John yeah. Cho. Yeah. yeah, it's I who is a good movie. actor. I really uh, like. I'm gonna feel movies, so I'm bad if I if I mess up his name. But uh, yeah, man, I heard that's uh, a really good movie. Okay. It's awesome. It's really yeah. really. It's really awesome. A lot of fun. I know. I've been meaning to watch that one too. Okay. Well, um, yeah. My my closing remarks are just like my overall is just that it's well, maybe you should rate it first, and then I'll I'll talk okay. to you about that. Let's let's do a let's go around and say out of ten, how what you would rate this, Max? What would you rate this? Hmm. Well, I brought the movie to you guys, so I'm obviously biased to it. Um, I really, really, really love. Yeah, the that's movie. fine. Um, I think as far as like like pound for pound like a film score though i'd probably give it a solid mm-hmm. like i'd probably give it like a like a 9.3 out of 10 i really enjoy it i think it's very effective okay. so okay cool carter well all things considered i really like how they filmed it and just like how they um i think this is one of the best like faux documentaries uh, that I that I've mm-hmm. seen personally, um, and I you know with the lingering feeling that I get afterwards, I'm gonna have to say a good like a good six point five, six you know what six point eight. Oh, whoa! I, out of ten, <laughs> jumping it up a little bit. I'm jumping up on that IMDb scale. Yeah, yeah, you're a little bit. Um... Yeah, I'd I'd probably go around like a, a seven. I, I it was a lot lower when I when I first it was at like a five when I when I stopped watching it and like like I was saying before it just kind of stuck with me a little bit. Um, it this movie definitely isn't for everybody. It's it's very slow. It's it's not like like the creeps are subtle. You know, they're very very uh. Like what, like what we've all been saying, they linger and stuff. But uh, it definitely commits to its style, um, and I, I kind of I give it a lot of credit for that as well. Whether it worked for you or not, uh, I'd still give like a, a seven out of ten. Nice. Uh, that's personally me. But um, I don't know if there's anything else that anyone wants to mention. But uh, I'm trying to think of another like bad would... found footage movie to recommend. <laughs> but you know what? I just can't. Should I? Oh, I can think of some of those. I bet. Uh, should I plug my stuff, or is that like a normal? Oh yeah, thing? plug, plug, oh, plug yeah, yourself yeah. We're, away. <laughs> we're in that we're in that realm. Thank you so much, Max, for for coming on. By the way. Yeah, thank you for was, having me. It's uh, I, I happy to be a part of IPN again. Jump back in with with uh, yeah. all my heart. I I had a feeling that you would come with one that that was that would definitely make a great discussion so so i was i was pretty stoked for it Heck yeah. um but yeah uh, anything you want to plug any personal stuff or uh well things that you're doing uh well i'm let's see i'm working on a new music project uh it's called laser light cannon um that's actually what my name on instagram is now it's just uh no spaces laser light cannon um and there's not a ton of content on there yet, but I just kind of got done upgrading all my music equipment and getting all that up to par and everything. So I'm going to be I'm working on a new album. I have an EP that's going to be up on Spotify in the next couple of like a week or so here, probably that I did a long time ago. But oh, I'm working okay. on a new album now. By the time by the time this comes out, it'll already be there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you guys are time travelers. Hey, 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 from yeah. the past. How are you doing? Yeah. How uh, how uh, how are you? 
how are you liking that EP? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, my Twitter is just uh, Max Reed, and then three eyes, Max Reed the third. Mm-hmm. All right. How it's, how it's supposed All... to be spelled. Roman numerals. Yeah, yeah. You know, Rome. When in when in Rome, you you, you do that. You do the numerals. Okay. <laughs> Carter. Uh, you know, Carter WBT on Instagram on private. So maybe you'll get in, maybe you won't. If the bouncer lets you in, then sure. Um, and then you know, follow IPN usual. If you're listening to us, you know, thank you. Thanks a lot. Cool. Uh, yeah, follow In Pursuit of Nothing and all the social meds. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Those are the main. And uh, you put stuff on Twitter I sometimes. Name. I, I love that word you use, social meds. I've never heard that before at this podcast. Yeah. I was like, social I meds. That, I like that. Social meds. I don't know. It's sounds sounds quirky, you know? It's yeah, like you know, um, <laughs> that you bring to a party. It's like a social med. Yeah. <laughs> social a social need. Oh. Like a bakery. A oh, a mead. Oh, okay. A mead. Okay. <laughs> like a beer. I, I couldn't hear you. Social need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like an ale or something. An ale. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Keep dropping my water bottle. You dropped your mead. Um, and, and then uh, you can follow me if, if you want. I don't care. Alex Casillas. <laughs> All the social meads. Oh, I, there it, it is really again. It doesn't impact. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Social meads. Uh-huh. Yep. Wait. Sorry, I'm hearing buzzing. Huh? Yeah, it is. It's happening again. Interesting. Is that good? Is that better? There we go. Uh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> the perfect I'm way. Um, it around my table. <laughs> the perfect way to end off. To end off this episode. One, once again, Max. With the. Thank you. With a spook. <laughs> With a spook. Thank you again, Max, for coming here. It was great. Uh, we know that you're going to be back on at some point in the future. And thank you, everyone. Oh, sorry. And thank you, everyone out there, for listening every week. New episodes come out every Monday. Uh, tune in next week where we go to a land down under where women glow and men plunder. Can't you hear? Can't you hear that thunder? You better run. You better take cover. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> I thought of that just now. <laughs> wow. Just kidding. Oh, I have the lyrics to that song on my phone and I'm looking at them. Nice. Okay. <laughs> See you next week, everyone. I'm, I'm gonna-